Isn't it a bigger problem that the majority of society uses this single product that is only owned by one company that is really only beholden to a board and a CEO and some shareholders and again a horny nerd at the very top? Like horny nerds should not be the arbiters of free speech, but that is the world we live in now. And I want to change that, okay? I want to give it to good nerds who are also horny sometimes, but not exclusively horny. Just, just you know, moderate in everything in moderation, right? There's, there's a time and a place. It's just what, what I'm saying here. Yeah. I do want to talk a little bit about something pretty wild, though, and that is uh, the Facebook. You know, I know, I know, all of you clearly want to talk about dicks. Just running my hand through a pile of dicks right now. But um, rather than talk about dicks or, or anything related to that subject, we should talk about Facebook. Uh, you know, it's it's the uh, the place where your uncle and your parents probably go to get the majority of their news. It's also the thing that keeps Ben Shapiro's entire empire afloat. Uh, and it's pretty much destroying society in a lot of ways. Yesterday, Facebook went down and everyone was super happy about it. Uh, ish. I would say happy and also freaking out for some reason, uh, kind of a combination of the two. People are like, whoa, Facebook is down. This is wild. Whoa, Facebook stocks are going down. This is wild. Whoa, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, uh, accrued wealth has gone down by $7 billion. This is all wild. Uh, and then a lot of other people were like, yeah, but Facebook is not just Facebook. It's uh, it's a lot of things now. So, so WhatsApp is down. And the shitty thing about the WhatsApp being down is, of course, a lot of people depend on it for communication. Specifically, a lot of people in uh, other countries. And uh, I was speaking to Dave. He's the other surf uh, from youtube.com slash the TV. And he communicates with a lot of his friends and relatives in India uh, via WhatsApp. It's very heavily used uh, around the world as a communication tool. Now, the last time there was anything that threatened WhatsApp's uh, dominance in a lot of those, uh, let's just say, communication fields was when WhatsApp was uh, threatening to remove its encryption. And then a lot of people were like, whoa. And then they saw record plunges in the amount of subscribers. And then, of course, they were like, no, 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 okay, okay. It can, the encryption can stay. Um, but you cannot take... Uh, say Facebook down or break Facebook up or end Facebook as uh, a social media super site uh, without also affecting WhatsApp right now. So uh, now would be a small time for me to make a push for all of you to use an alternative to that. I'm sure people in the chat can tell you there's maybe some open source ones uh, or Signal. Signal, of course, is very good. It's the one that most journalists use. Journalists use it to uh, communicate with each other. Drug dealers as well. Uh, drug dealers like using Signal. It's uh, apparently very secure. Uh, in terms of its ability to encrypt your messaging and uh, hide what you say to one another. But uh, yeah, Facebook didn't go down. It was gone. Like they were drilling to get back to their HQ. A lot of site uses Facebook for login as well. Okay, so here's one thing I want to say. I think uh, not just the left, but the internet uh, and specifically Twitter kind of got this one very wrong. I saw a world of conspiracy theories. I mean, we were watching and reporting on it as it was happening, and obviously people were like, this this is a thing, check out this link and this link, and I'll be the first to say that I do not have enough expertise when it comes to uh, tech to be able to explain why this is happening or why this makes sense or why. The, the thing that really resonated with me was finding out that, of course, the internet is incredibly fragile, and uh, it's only one furry away, one furry with a pager away from completely collapsing. So to the furry with the pager who fixed things, to people who needed WhatsApp to communicate with their families, I guess uh, people owe you a debt of gratitude. But um, there's something else. Uh, I saw a lot of conspiracy theories floating around that Facebook had been hacked successfully. Uh, that was not the case. Uh, but then I saw the other side of the conspiracy theories, which were related to this, because not as many people knew about this story, that a whistleblower... Uh, from Facebook actually gave a testimony to the Senate panel the day before. Now, I'm not in any way suggesting that they're correlated, um, but it has taken a lot of the story away from the Senate testimony, and more people are now talking about how, of course, Facebook, uh, you know, collapsed for a series of hours. So I wanted to play a little bit of this because I haven't actually listened to any of it. The opportunity to appear before you. My name is Frances Haugen. I used to work at Facebook. I joined Facebook because I think Facebook has the potential to bring out the best in us. But I'm here today because I believe Facebook's products harm children, stoke division, and weaken our democracy. The company's leadership knows how to make Facebook and Instagram safer, but won't make the necessary changes because they have put their astronomical profits before people. Congressional action is needed. They won't solve this crisis without your help. Yesterday, we saw Facebook get taken off the internet. 
I don't know why it went down, but I know that for more than five hours, Facebook wasn't used to deepen divides, destabilize democracies, and make young girls and women feel bad about their bodies. It also means that millions of small businesses weren't able to reach potential customers and countless photos of new babies. Oh, well, just to be clear, I'm not going to be playing the entire two hour uh, question period. I just want to hear the opening statements, which are only about eight minutes on 125. It should be about three. Four These weren't minutes. joyously celebrated by family and friends around the world. I believe in the potential of Facebook. We can have social media we enjoy that connects us without tearing our apart our democracy, putting our children in danger and sowing ethnic violence around the world. We can do better. I have worked as a product manager at large tech companies since 2006, including Google, Pinterest, Yelp, and Facebook. My job has largely focused on algorithmic products like Google Plus Search and recommendation systems like the one that powers the Facebook newsfeed. Having worked on four different types of social networks, I understand how complex and nuanced these problems are. However, the choices being made inside of Facebook are disastrous for our children, for our public safety, for our privacy, and for our democracy. And that is why we must demand Facebook make changes. You know, a lot of people see this and they're like, well, this is just kind of catastrophic that if it went down for that period of time, the amount of, you know, wealth that just plummets in real time. But when I see this, you know what I think? Buy the dip, baby, to the moon. Come on, where's that Dogecoin energy? We're going to get this. Come on, y'all. This is going to be the next AMC. I feel it. I feel it. It's, it's, it's going to be good. During my time at Facebook, first working as the lead product manager for civic misinformation and later on counter espionage. I saw Facebook repeatedly encounter conflicts between its own profits and our safety. Facebook consistently resolved these conflicts in favor of its own profits. The result has been more division, more harm. I should probably add an addendum that that was a bit and that I do not actually give legitimate financial advice. Uh, please do not ever listen to any financial advice you will find on the show. Please only invest money that you're prepared to lose because you will most likely lose it. First time investors into the stock market are not great investors. Uh, thank you more lies, more threats, and more combat. In some cases, this, this dangerous online talk has led to actual violence that harms and even kills people. This is not- Unless, of course, we're talking about Surfcoin. Always invest in Surfcoin. Surfcoin is the way it is known. It's simply a matter of certain social media users being angry or unstable, or about one side being radicalized against the other. It is about Facebook choosing to grow at all costs, becoming an almost trillion dollar company by buying its profits with our safety. During my time at Facebook, I came to realize a devastating truth. Almost no one outside of Facebook knows what happens inside of Facebook. The company intentionally hides vital information from the public, from the U.S. government, and from governments around the world. The documents I have provided to Congress prove that Facebook has repeatedly misled the public about what its own research reveals about the safety of children, the efficacy of its artificial intelligence systems, and its role in spreading divisive and extreme messages. I came forward because I believe that every human being Velvet deserves worm. the dignity of the Thank truth. you. To the moon. The severity of this crisis demands that we break out of our previous regulatory frames. Facebook wants to trick you into thinking that privacy protections or changes to Section 230. Yes. So I see people in the chat saying, don't we already know all of this? Well, a lot of this is assumed. I mean, we now have a testimony on record basically confirming what most people have been talking about for a long time. We have a, a whistleblower who's coming out and stating all this. The story behind this whistleblower is that apparently she joined the company with the intention of helping to change it. And when she realized she wasn't able to do that within the framework of working for the company, she then decided to become a whistleblower to expose these parts of the corporation itself. Now, the biggest problem with Facebook, as well as most of these tech giants, is, of course, they've grown to the size that such a large portion of the world uses them. Like, even if now, in like, I know yesterday when Facebook was down, most Zoomers and millennials were like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, is is like, you know, 1-800-PIZZA uh, down too, because I wasn't going to call them. Like, it's not something that anybody's using on a regular basis uh, in those age demographics in this part of the world. In other parts of the world, Facebook is still unbelievably popular. It's, uh, like I said, and the fact that it owns both Instagram and WhatsApp, and, uh, you know, those are primary communication devices for a lot of the rest of the world, uh, also make the idea of Facebook having this incredible amount of control very, very dangerous. Facebook has never operated in a way that seems like it's primarily concerned with the betterment of society at any point in history. Because, like, can we please just remember why Facebook was created? It was because a horny nerd wanted to do a hot or not ranking system in his university. That's, that's what started Facebook. It was a horny nerd. And, and now, this same horny nerd 
uh, has unbelievable amounts of power. He's one of the 10 richest human beings on the planet and controls a social media platform in which nearly 1 billion people, or maybe more now, use his like technology. And every single step of the way, no matter what they're doing, it never seems like it's for bettering uh, the human experience. Or, or it always seems as if it's about addicting humans to his systems, uh, making humans dependent upon his systems, making humans... Uh, need to log in for long periods of time in order to get what they consider the news or get what they consider information, uh, not knowing how addicted they're becoming. Like, have you ever seen those documentaries on social media where they interviewed the people who invented the like button? I was like, yeah, that, that was my idea. My idea was the like button. I was like, oh, cool. Well, what was the purpose of behind it? Were you trying to, like, uh, make human beings smile? And I was like, no, I figured that this would be a very uh, effective way at getting them to use this uh, service for longer periods of time. Uh, based on, of course, the ranking uh, and categorization of our emotions and stuff like that. You're like, oh, well, that's sinister as fuck. Cool. Um, and the fact that these massive corporations, obviously, the end result is going to be what pr uh, amount of profit can we generate for our CEOs, for our boards? That's what this really comes down to. Makes it extra dangerous. Now, the other thing is like, well, but what do we do? Like, what, what can we possibly do? I mean... They won, right? It's it's game over. They won. They control everything now. They control us in every way. I, I'm going to be moving into my Amazon city soon, and I'm going to be wearing my Amazon clothes and eating my Amazon Soylent and, you know, wearing Amazon jammies and eating Amazon uh, nuggies and, and all that kind of shit. That's, that's just the future. And, uh, oh, I'm sure everyone saw that other headline the other day. Apparently, people are trying to get uh, Amazon and Facebook seats at the United Nations which I guess was going to be the next logical step to all of this. It's like, okay, we're going to treat giant corporate entities like countries because they have similar amounts of GDP uh, and wealth accumulation. Good. Normal. This is, this, is, uh, this is healthy. This is a healthy society working as it should. Now, uh, it turns out that companies, when they get to a certain size in United States history, have before been broken up. And I know that seems strange, that seems anti-capitalist, that seems anti-progress, anti-business. I mean, isn't the idea that any single person can succeed by their own merit in America, and if they do so, they can grow their company, and then they can grow to such a size that it becomes a massive corporation, and then they can grow it until it works overseas, becomes a multinational corporation with offices in multiple countries, uh, and then eventually earn its own seat at the UN. That's kind of the American dream in action. And the idea of taking a company that reaches a certain size and then breaking it up uh, seems very counter un-American, right? It's counterproductive. I mean, how are we going to inspire people to be the next Zuckerbergs? How will we inspire more horny nerds to make uh, hot or not ranking systems if we do not, in fact, have this endless amount of growth? Like, you can reach any size you want. Does not matter. You can get as big as uh, countries themselves. Eventually, you can become an overlord. You can dominate the entire planet. And if we do not have this ability for every single human to succeed to such heights, then no one will be inspired, again, to make a hot or not ranking system in college uh, with relative uh, dorm rooms and a little bit of coding. So that's just the future, I suppose. What do you break them up into is the question I have. Yeah, well, I mean, so the example I could turn to... The combined wealth of Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg... Amazon's Jeff Bezos, and Google's Sergey Brin and Larry Page is larger than the combined wealth of the bottom half of the American population. They're the oh. leaders of a second gilded age, ushered in by semiconductors, software, and the internet, which has spawned a handful of high-tech behemoths and crushed competition. Facebook, Amazon, Google, Apple, and Microsoft now have the highest market values of all public corporations in America. As of today, only three countries in the world have a GDP higher than these companies. You know what's funny is I was just talking about that, and a little bit of it was obviously being facetious, you know, just because it's, it, this is a show, I'm trying to make it entertaining for y'all, so I, I say things that are a little bit silly, but I then try to rein them back so you know when I'm being serious and not serious, ideally, that's kind of the idea. But when I was talking about their GDPs, as in the amount of money that they produce uh, and uh, their value, I, I didn't know it was going to be this bad. I, I didn't think there was only three countries that uh, that can top well this is the combined okay let's be real here this is the combined power of all five of them this is not them on their own okay it's not as bad as you all think this is if we combined all five of the biggest tech giants together into one mega giant which of course could happen 
Can you imagine if any one of these five bought one of the other ones, which is just an inevitability, really? I mean, if you have unregulated capitalism, eventually that's what's going to happen. So who's it going to be? Who's going to fall to the others? I mean, my money would probably be on Windows being the first to go or Facebook. It's Facebook or Windows, one of the two, because less and less people are using Facebook. But Facebook is smart at diversifying and going into other directions. I don't know. That's a tough one. Spinach monster. Uh, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to Velvet Worm. Um, this data is four years old. True. Things could be even worse now. Companies combined market value of approximately four trillion dollars. America's first Gilded Age began in the late 19th century with a raft of innovations, railroads, steel production, oil extraction, that culminated in mammoth trusts run by robber barons like J.P. Morgan, John D. Rockefeller, and William Vanderbilt. The answer then was to break up the railroad, oil, and steel monopolies. The answer today is the same. Break up big tech. First, they have a stranglehold on the economy. Nearly 90% of all internet searches now go through Google. Facebook and Google together will account for nearly 60% of all digital ad spending in 2019, where most ad money goes these days. They're also the first stops for many Americans seeking news. 93% of Americans say they receive at least some news online. Amazon is now the first stop for almost half of all American consumers seeking to buy anything online. With such size comes the power to stifle innovation. Google uses its search engine to promote its own products and content over those of its competitors, like Yelp. Facebook's purchases of WhatsApp and Instagram killed off two potential rivals. Oh, by the way, um, just a, a neat little piece of advice for anybody. I mean, there's, there's 400 people watching right now. Use Acosia.org, Acosia.org instead of Google. It's it's armchair activism. If you use Acosia.org, a, 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 you're not giving uh, the ad revenue to the Googles, but B, uh, they use the money from the ad revenue to plant trees. Now, it's kind of shitty. I'll, I'll just say that as somebody who uses it on a daily basis. It's kind of a shitty search engine, but for generic searches, it works totally fine. Uh, it's very specific ones, then you usually click on the little tab button that says now use Google. Which I which I do, but yeah, ecosia.org, ecosia.org. Uh, it's a uh, it's a good one. Ecosia and DuckDuckGo run on Bing. You're not escaping big tech. What? They run on Bing? I didn't know that. The hell, Squid? Why are you destroying my life? Wait, if it runs on Bing, why is it shittier than Bing? Oh no. Well, at least it'll put some of the money towards planting trees. Then there you go. Apple stifles competition in its App Store. Partly because of this economic concentration, the rate that new job-creating businesses have formed in the United States has almost halved since 2004, according to the Census Bureau. Second, such size also gives these giant corporations political power to get whatever they want, undermining our democracy. In 2018, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft spent $70.9 million on lobbying and supporting candidates. Amazon, the richest corporation in America. By the way, that number is what would make actually achieving this so difficult. So say, you know, let's be in the timeline where Bernie Sanders had won and uh, the Democrats have more than just this like 50 Senate, you know, it has to be everyone or nothing. So we don't have to worry about Kirsten Cinema or Joe Manchin. Even then, it would be such a difficult task uh, to be able to convince um the gen uh, the general public and politicians that this was in their best interest to break them up because a all the conservatives who constantly scream and whine about big tech uh censoring their free speech and that uh, big tech has a liberal bias and like you know youtube and facebook and all these companies uh even though they definitely don't they're only biases towards money but even though they're constantly saying that they're going to be on the side of those big companies. You'll see them instantly suddenly go from being like, oh, these evil corporations, Amazon are trying to destroy us all, to wait, why are we trying to destroy big businesses? This is un-American. You're trying to destroy the American way of life, which unfortunately would be regurgitated by the Democrats too. The Democrats would come forward and most likely state that, yes, this is not American, of course, for us to, uh, to intercede in a private business and their affairs. But the problem is these companies you'll notice they don't do anything of their own volition. Like, it's not like Google or Facebook comes forward and is like, you know what? We have a massive problem when in regards to blank. Like, let's say the privacy thing. Do you remember how bad Facebook's privacy rules used to be? And it took multiple hearings. Uh, it took, like, to hold them to account. Like, if you don't pass legislation that forces these companies to do something, to do X, they're not going to do it. 
on their own. There's no, like, Facebook cares about you, Google cares about you, Amazon, like, none of these companies do. Oh, now I have to have my entire world destroyed. Why must you destroy my world every day? Known as the search engine that plants trees, Ecosia has gained popularity amongst eco-conscious internet users since 2009. Here, we consider whether Ecosia is a good choice in comparison to the industry leaders. Um... When you search Ecosia, you're actually searching Microsoft Bing. That sucks. Ecosia doesn't generate its own web results. Instead, it has a partnership with Bing, meaning Bing provides results and the advertisers that you see. As Ecosia doesn't develop its own website uh, index, technologically speaking, it's not really a competitor in the world of search engines. This approach is quite common. Yeah, I know. TechDuckGo uses them as well. Unless it develops its own matrix to produce its own results, an astonishing, enormous undertaking that will only ever constitute limited fringe competition to big players. Ecosia's revenue comes from Bing's advertisements. The adverts are generated by Bing, and when you click on one Ecosia, you receive a share of the revenue generated off the click. This way, Ecosia raises money through clicks on ads. Therefore, if you search the engine but don't click on the ads, Ecosia won't make any money. Therefore, you won't be planting any additional trees. It's the ad revenue that enables you to plant trees. Uh, it says it's planted 120 million trees. 80% of its advertising profits are used for the trees. It's estimated to take 45 searches for Ecosia to generate the ad revenue for a single tree. Uh, as mentioned, if you don't click, you're not making its money. How does it score? It has an ethos score of 11, but it causes its relationship with Microsoft, which scores 6.5, has an impact on the score. But what does that mean? That, like, <laughs> I need to know more about this website. Okay, so Google is 5.5, Bing is 6.5, and it's 11, so it's still much better. It's double. It's double the ethos score, all right? Whatever that means. Ecosia has an ethy score of 11, in contrast to Google 5.5 and Microsoft Bing. So you know what? My endorsement is not in vain. In fact, my endorsement remains, go use Ecosia, okay? Double. Much wow. Quite good. Meanwhile, it held a bidding war to extort billions. Out of 100? I don't care. It's it's still better. I mean, if you have to use Microsoft Bing or, or Alta Vista. I wonder what Alta Vista score is on the ethy score. I bet Alta Vista is real high. From states and cities eager to have its second headquarters. Not to mention, these companies have tremendous influence Adequate. over how Americans receive information. And as we've seen, Facebook and Google have enabled... Search for a cause is better, along with tab for a cause? All right. Search for Third, a cause. Giant tech companies also hurt the environment. Many are failing to reduce greenhouse emissions, as they promised, and are unwilling to commit fully to renewable energy. Finally, their huge wealth isn't being shared with most of their workers. Nine in ten workers in Silicon Valley make less now than they did in 1997, adjusted for inflation. And many are part of the working homeless, that is, people who work full-time and yet are still homeless. The answer is to break them up. That way, information would be distributed through a large number of independent channels instead of a centralized platform, and more startups. That is such a fucked up term and concept, the working homeless? Uh, are you fucking kidding me? ...could flourish. Even one of Facebook's founders has called for the social media behemoth to be broken up. Senator Elizabeth Warren has introduced a proposal to do just that. It would force tech giants to open up their platforms to more competition or break up into smaller companies. Other countries are already taking on big tech. The European Union fined Google nearly $3 billion for antitrust violations in 2017. Let's be clear, monopolies aren't good for anyone except for the monopolists, especially when they can True. influence our elections and control how Americans receive True. information. In this new Gilded Age, True. we need to respond to them as forcefully as we did to the monopolies of the first Gilded Age. And break them up. I feel like that could have been a lot f cooler. Like, if that's what you were going for, this... Why did you go down the center? Like, go down the line, you can smash through all of this. Yeah. You know what, I don't care about breaking up big tech anymore, you lost me. Initially could not say what caused the failure. But the company later said the problem- But, uh, sorry, jokes aside, this is something that should be, like, all the free speech warriors, you know, your Kyle Kalinskis or anyone else who's just like, uh, I'm tired of YouTube being the ones that decide whether or not this channel lives or dies. I'm tired of Twitter being the one that decides whether or not this person's account lives or dies. Uh, I think that everyone should have a right to say everything all the time, doesn't matter what it is kind of stuff. Why is it that these tech companies keep deciding that this person's good, this person's bad based on arbitrary decisions? We should be flipping the narrative of this and being like, because we are cucked as a society to these massive companies, these massive corporations, they have fooled us, you see. Now we actually think in the modern age that it's okay. It's okay that these are the arbiters of free speech. It's okay that these are the ones who decide whether or not this person's good, this person's bad. Why is that? 
Isn't it a bigger problem that the majority of society uses this single product that is only owned by one company that is really only beholden to a board and a CEO and some shareholders and again a horny nerd at the very top? Like horny nerds should not be the arbiters of free speech, but that is the world we live in now. And I want to change that, okay? I want to give it to good nerds who are also horny sometimes, but not exclusively horny. Just, just you know, moderate, in everything in moderation. Right? Uh, there's there's a time and a place. It's just what, what I'm saying here. Yeah. So the furries. <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's give it to the furries. Let's break up big tech and get it in the hands of the furries. All right? It's about time. They have their due. Hey, do you, do you, do you like movies? Do you, do you, like, do you like surfs? Do you want do you want do you want movies and surf surfs watching the movies so then come over to the new channels it's the surf cinema thanks so much for watching everybody can you do the thing you know that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives also if you happen to have a facebook account um can you can you delete it like just just delete it you should probably delete your facebook account because it's just it's not a great company, but hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just gonna be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you gotta do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks everybody. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, may you shower us mortals with gifts from the heaven. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are your humble jesters, clowning around for your amusement. To our lord, Trevor R. and Alexander Thaler, we give you our thanks for this meager land for us to toil our seed. To our knights of the round table, Hagbard Sealine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariana McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, ants are still running the world, Coulter Smith, Tom Groh, Val 9000, Jenna Tal, Dark Puppy, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevor Janis, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Chronic de Hemphog, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our glasses and we salute you, our comrades.